we're going to do a tool review on this digital bolt tester made by Spies Peckerment as you can see now this is called the Terminator this is brilliant because it's very simple and it's best when you keep things simple because otherwise it can confuse you and then you can start getting sidetracked to give you an idea of what I mean by simple as you can see the size of it now this is a different beast altogether this is a DSO it will do everything this will do and more but it's very complicated and if you really don't know how to use this it's going to get very complicated very very quickly where this is very simple and the simpler you can keep it the easier it is for yourself and it's sorted this basically measures three things the other good thing about this is this is designed to work with a canvas wiring car so if you have a cheaper multimeter you can put it on a on a, on a part and it can actually send power back and it can actually do damage so as regards multimeters they are vitally important if you're working on cars and I can only say do not buy the really really cheap ones honestly you are wasting your money these aren't particularly that expensive yes you can go to stupid amounts like this but you don't need to you can keep it very simple with something like this and believe me this would be one of the most used tools you've got so spending a few extra quid on it isn't really going to kill you in the long run scheme of things it's also an exercise thing not that I need exercise obviously I'm uh, perfectly physically perfect it's just me we're not all lucky like me anyway so this measures three things this measures bolts which is what you're mainly going to use it measures Hertz and it measures percentage or duty cycles and Hertz can, is frequency so it measures three things so not only can this test voltage this can actually test components in your car like ABS sensors and all types of sensors like that now the downside to it is Yes, you can measure your ABS sensor. Yes, you can measure your crankshaft sensor. But if you don't have the right specs for that car, it then becomes quite difficult. And it is quite difficult to find the specs because the main dealers don't really like to share it. Um, but if you can find the specs for a specific sensor you have in your car, then this will test it straight away. Because especially on modern cars now, let's say an ABS light comes on. Well, it ne not necessarily is the ABS sensor. And very quickly, you can test the ABS sensor. And a lot of the ABS sensors now are very expensive. So the first thing is if you plug a computer in and it says left-hand uh, front ABS sensor, well, then you just, you just think, okay, that's what it is. That sensor could be 200 quid. And you could put it in and still have the same problem. So it might not be the ABS sensor. It could be the ABS ring. It could be the wire going to, so it could be loads of things. So this can kind of tell you quite quickly what's going on. And if the, te if the sensor tests good, well, then you know it's something else. But unfortunately, the sensor is obviously the easiest thing to replace. Then it starts getting kind of complicated. So I'm going to kind of show you how this works. And uh, yeah, so we'll get cracking on with it. So the first thing, we've obviously got a battery here. So if we need to test anything electrical to make sure we're getting 12 volts or whatever voltage we need for it it's very simple put it on I hope I get it the right way around put it on and as we can see it says 12.5 volts so we know if this was a wire we're testing we're getting 12 volts simple nice if we're not getting 12 volts well then we might have a problem somewhere else but at least this tells us quite and kind of quickly if we've got a problem also it can test things like alternators and stuff so if you if this is in your car once your battery is connected you can actually test your alternator so again you can see is it your battery that's faulty or alternator very very quickly very good now as regards the other ones all you do is you press the button here and you can see I'm scrolling through that's now Hertz or frequencies that's now duty cycle or percentage it just depends on the way you want to say it but that's essentially it also another good thing this has it has a light as you can see there so if you're trying to get down somewhere in a car and you can't particularly see the wires there has a little light there so you can see where you're poking around which is very very good now let's try and explain these other ones now the only way I'm gonna be able to do it is I've got a fan it's not an exact way of doing it but it's going to give you an idea of what to look for now the first thing I'm going to measure is percentage or duty cycle 
Now essentially, this is not going to work properly, but you're just going to get an idea. Essentially, the percentage or duty cycle is, it measures time. So that imagine it as a switch in your house. If you switch that switch on and off, say a hundred times a second, well it's been off 50% of that time and it's been turned on 50% of that time. So this is where the technical data comes in and this is what might be kind of hard to figure out. So let's say you're just testing a sensor that's supposed to be, and again I'm just making it easy, let's say that sensor is supposed to be on and off 50% of the time in a second. So what we'd be looking for on this is 50. It's as simple as that. But some sensors might be, say, on 55% of the time and off 45 It just depends on what you're testing. And this is kind of the crucial part. But you're going to get an idea. So, like, if you had the technical data on something and you had this duty cycle and it wasn't matching up, well, then you know you've got a problem with that part. It's essentially that. So what I'm going to do is I have just the fan connected to a battery. And as I turn it on, as you can see, the fan goes on and off. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the multimeter back on, turn it back to duty cycle. Now obviously I'm not going to be able to do this as fast and as constant as a sensor would, um, but you're going to get an idea. So an ABS sensor, for example, is going around. Well, that is, that's constant depending on how fast you're going. And that, that constantly gives you that signal. Well, I'm not going to be able to do it that quick, but you're going to get an idea. As you can see, if I leave it on longer, the number goes up. And if I do it quick, oh. so if I do it quite quick, you can see the number's quite low. If I leave it on longer, and it goes to 99, which is all you need. So that's basically telling it that's on 70% of the time so it only gives you the on reading so once you've got the on reading you've got the off reading so if it's 50% of the time well then it's off 50% of the time so this is where the technical data like I said comes in and that can be kind of hard to find depending on what you're working at so duty cycles basically measures the time something is turned on at if you've got your car running or you're doing something and the power is permanently to that sensor and let's just say again, for, to make it nice and easy, it's supposed to be 50%. Well, once you touch it on that sensor, this should read 50%. If it's reading high or lower, you know you've got a problem with that uh, sensor or whatever you happen to be testing. Especially with duty cycles. Again, let's just imagine you're testing an ABS sensor. And let's imagine it should be reading 50. So it's on 50% of the time and off 50% of the time. Well, if you monitor that for a few seconds, and all of a sudden it jumps to, say... 80% well then that means more than likely you've got a broken tooth on your CV joint because it's it's measuring 50 50 50 and it comes to a tooth that's broken so there's a bigger gap and then all it jumps quickly so then that will tell you okay well look it's not the ABS sensor that's gone it's the ring of the ABS the tooth of the ABS ring well then then you know to start stripping the CV joint rather than buying a new sensor so that's the beauty of testing the duty cycles because you can tell whatever that sensor is hitting and reading if it jumps mad well then you know you've got another problem within something else rather than thinking okay yeah it's definitely my ABS sensor let's order an ABS sensor at 200 quid it's not the ABS sensor and you can't take it back so let's measure Hertz or frequency now, again, I'm going to use the ABS sensor as kind of a, a, a reference. Let's imagine the ABS sensor has to turn on and off, let's say, 20 times a second. Well, this measures how many times per second something is um, on. So, again, if the ABS sensor is 20, this should read 20. Again, I'm going to try and show you. It's not going to be accurate, but you're going to get an idea. So, I just hold that there.
So it's really a, essentially three different ways of measuring something. Um, to be fair, all you're going to really use is voltage. But if you want to kind of, you know, look into a bit more on sensors rather than just saying, okay, yes, it's a sensor. Well, you can kind of look into it. Now, to be fair, most of the time, if you do plug it into a computer, and it does say, for example, ABS sensor. It, you can more or less say it is the ABS sensor, but not all the time. I mean, you know, it, it does happen where it's not. And for you to go and strip all the CV joints out and to test everything, that can take a long time. Where with this, you don't need to do that. You can you can tell straight away. Like I said, the downside is you need to know the technical data for your car, for your sensor, you know, and that's what can be kind of hard to find. But if you can find that, then you can literally test more or less every sensor in your car with this so you know if it's the sensor or you've got another problem somewhere else. It really is as easy as that. And the beauty with this is it's just so simple. There's nothing, you just plug it into the volts and it says 12 volts, it says 11 volts, it says 8 volts. Just It's, it's very quick, very, very fast and it's, it's brilliant. It really is. Also, you can measure fuses with this. Now, most cars, to be fair, do come with like a little board like this and it tells you what fuse does what. But it might have got lost in your car, it might not have them. And even, even though this has it, sometimes the numbers are not on the actual fuse box themselves. So rather than trying to pull out every single fuse and figure out which one is gone, if you earth this to your car, obviously the car needs to be turned on. And then what you can do is you can plug, on the end of each fuse, you've got these two little metal contacts, and you can basically plug it in. Now that would read 12 volts. And if you go to the other side and it's reading zero, well then you know this fuse is gone. If you read this fuse and on both sides it says 12 volts, well then you know the fuse is okay. And very, very quickly you can go through all your fuses in your, in your fuse box and you can find out which fuse is gone. So multimeters, they are absolutely fantastic. I just personally would say kind of go for a decent one, a, a proper branded one. Because it, if you do, if you get the really cheap one and you're working on a kind of a modern car and you put power the wrong way, well it's going to cost you a hell of a lot more to repair that car than what a decent multimeter would go. You don't have to spend stupid money on them, but the ones at 5, 10, 15 quid, stay away. Honestly, stay away. You can even get these second hand very, very, very cheap actually. You don't have to buy new. You know, you don't, I'm not saying go out there and buy the best one, you know, at 600 quid. You don't have to do that. You can even get a lot of really good quality tools second hand. I just would say stay away from the really cheap, nasty ones because they don't necessarily always read correctly. They, they could say 12 volts and it might be, it could be 11.8 and that. 0.2 of a volt could make all the difference. That can make you think, well, hold on, I'm getting enough volts here. It's not a problem with the battery. It's not a problem with the wire. And it could be. So a good digital multimeter is brilliant. And the best thing about these ones is you don't have to click the button around. If you're not used to exactly which setting to put this, this is automatic. This does it automatically for you. You put it in, test the voltage, and it'll automatically do it. You don't have to go to 5 volts, 10 volts, 20 volts. This is automatic. And that's what makes everyone's life a lot easier. So yeah, that's, that's this. I use it, I don't know how many times a day. It is, they're, they're fantastic. And I can only suggest buy a decent multimeter. Right, I don't know if I explained it very well, so just get a really quick run through. Voltage obviously measures voltage, straightforward. Duty cycles measures time something is on. And frequency is measured cycles per second. It really is as simple as that. I maybe made it sound a bit more complicated down there. So that's essentially it. So look, hope it helps. Check out the forum and the website. Please log in and um, sign up for the forum. We hopefully can get a lot more questions answered on there a lot easier. Hope the video helps. Thumbs up and subscribe. And don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one.